Why, hello there, good friends. It's the Twykeen, and thanks for joining me for my newest project, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. I am really, really excited to get this Zelda project underway. I've pretty much wanted to do it at the start of the fall, but um, I decided to delay it to, like, towards the end of 2015 because it would happen to be around 10 years ago at that particular time that I first started playing The Wind Waker on GameCube. Um, about a year before that, I actually played the demo version on what's called the um, Collector's Edition GameCube disc. But I never owned the full game until over a year later. And <laughs> I would like to kind of start doing it at about the 10 years ago of the time I first started playing it. So I really hope you all look forward to this project as much as I do. And without further ado, may as well get it started. Um, as far as what I like about the HD version, I really like how the gameplay aspect of it is much more improved than in the GameCube version, especially for um, after you've beaten most of the main dungeons and do this one particular mission that um, so many people had had so much aggravation for, but now it's been kind of um, smoothed down to a better level. That is going to be one of the biggest things about it. Um, another really cool aspect is the um, the gyroscope controls for um, types of weapons you can use such as the bow and arrow and even the, the hook shot weapons like those I really like how the um, the aiming for those is a lot more intuitive rather than just using the control stick um, for this playthrough I will be only using the gamepad some people will like to use the pro controller because they want to pause and show what items um, they're using but for this particular uh, playthrough, I would rather use the gamepad for its um, easy, intuitive controls. You will be able to see which items I do equip while um, I'm on screen. But I'm going to go ahead and get that started. And these were a couple practice files I had done. Um, this one in particular is one you can do after you've completed um, the partic first particular mission you've done. This is one I'm currently doing. But... Um, even though I haven't done it in quite some time, I'm just not going to worry about that for right now. We'll go ahead and get this one filled in. <laughs> Alright. And for a username. Well, since I, since I pretty much said at the end of Majora's Mask I will not be using the name uh, Bess, I've decided to use some other cool name. And as far as um, what that name is going to be, um, I had a few in mind, but... Um, I am not quite sure yet, so I'm going to probably cut it right here until I figure out which name I'm going to use. So, give me a moment here. Okay, I've decided to come up with something, and I took over five minutes to figure something out, and I've decided to come up with something extremely cute for how um, Link is in this game. So, here's the name I've decided to come up with. <laughs> Just watch as I type it in. Yep, that's who I've decided to call <laughs> the Link in this particular game. Little One. <laughs> that may sound kind of weird, but that's just what I'm going to go with. And um, another thing I've planned to do for this particular project is not play on normal mode. Instead, we're going to play in hero mode. You can take double damage, but won't be given recovery hearts at any point. This mode is only for the truest heroes. So, I'm going to admit that this is going to be a... Uh, a blind playthrough of hero mode, so I'm not sure how well I'm going to do against um, double inflicted damage and such, but at least I just know the game from start to finish, so I'm just going to see how well I can do for um, a playthrough like that. So, without further ado, it's time to get the Wind Waker underway. This is but one of the legends of which the people speak. Long ago there existed a kingdom where a golden power lay hidden. It was a prosperous land, blessed with green forests, tall mountains, and peace. But one day, a man of great evil found the golden power, and took it for himself. The 
With its strength at his command, he spread darkness across the kingdom. But then, when all hope had died and the hour of doom seemed at hand, a young boy clothed in green appeared as if from nowhere. Wielding the blade of evil's bane, he sealed the Dark One away and gave the land light. This boy who traveled through time to save the land was known as the Hero of Time. The boy's tale was passed down through generations until it became legend. But then a day came when a fell wind began to blow across the kingdom. The great evil that all thought had been forever sealed away by the hero. Once again crept forth from the depths of the earth, eager to resume its dark designs. These people believed that the hero of time would again come to save them. But that hero did not appear. Faced by an onslaught of evil, the people could do nothing but appeal to the gods. In their last hour, as doom drew nigh, they left their future in the hands of fate. What became of that kingdom? None remain who know. The memory of the kingdom vanished, but its legend survived on the wind's breath. On a certain island, it became customary to garb boys in green when they came of age. Clothed in the green of fields, they aspired to find heroic blades and cast down evil. The elders wished only for the youths to know courage like the hero of legend. And so begins the journey on Outset Island. <laughs> A, an island you probably never would have thought would exist in this game. I'm not going to read many uh, characters' uh, text you see on the screen. Kind of like what I do in most uh, Zelda games, but I really wanted to do it for the uh, intro. And I also forgot to mention that... Um, as far as how this playthrough is going to go, like most Zelda playthroughs I've done, I will not be collecting every single scene in the game that includes all heart pieces. Um, I will also not be going for um, these particular items called um, treasure charts. Not every single treasure chart in the game, just a few and such. Because not many of them have um, decent rewards. And sometimes I don't really need those rewards. Alright. The little one's little sister has decided to show up on here. <laughs> so, we just, so we took a nap on Errol's lookout. That's what it was. <laughs> you're still half asleep. <laughs> well, yeah, a face like that definitely means you're half asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely doesn't feel right. <laughs> I mean, uh, is there? did they really want to come up with a Zelda game that um, wanted to make it that... As your birthday. <laughs> I bet that's one of the things they wanted to do to um, make this game appeal to people who were criticizing the cell shade of it way back then. <laughs> but that, that's just my take. I just really like how the gameplay aspect of this Zelda game goes. 
another thing that um, this Zelda game has, kind of like um, its predecessor, uh, Majora's Mask, even though it may not be a predecessor in the uh, Zelda timeline, it just um, it can kind of feel like it, especially for when it was released. Um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say right there. So before I head on over to Grandma's house, let's just grab some rupees right here because I'm gonna be needing those. Um, and when I pause, you're not going to see items on screen. That's only when you have the Pro Controller. So when I pause like this, you're only going to see that. Um, there's going to be another um, feature of this game that um, people will want to use the Pro Controller for so that they can be sh shown on the screen. But that won't be for a couple episodes from now. And I was walking to that tall grass because I thought um, I had the sword on me. But <laughs> that's not for quite a while. I don't know what I'm thinking right there. But... Up these ladder, ladder steps, I should say. <laughs> I've been waiting for you, little one. <laughs> little one, try these on. Yeah, that face he's got, that's definitely not <laughs> very appealing at all. <laughs> Just try them on. <laughs> You only have to wear them for one day. <laughs> I wonder if there may be many days beyond when he'd have to wear that. <laughs> the ways of peace, eh? Sword play. <laughs> I don't know how often you see that particular word in Zelda games. <laughs> Sword play. <laughs> it better make sense, Tim. <laughs> Isn't that nice, little one? They sue you perfectly. <laughs> yeah, why don't you get ready? Favorite soup. What kind of soup is it? Better be good tasting. <laughs> I mean, only the little one knows what it tastes like. But I sure wish I could know what it tastes like. <laughs> if I were in this game in real life. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Back on over to <laughs> the little sister. I don't know if rolling is a good time-saving technique for um, this playthrough, but at least um, at least he doesn't have a kind of stopping point for like um, like a quarter second or something like he does in the N64 Zelda games. But at least um, he doesn't have that much slowness, or it could be because I'm playing on a much more advanced uh, console where there's um, hardly any frame rate issues and pretty much no lag. The grandma make that outfit. <laughs> you look like you'd be way too hot. <laughs> I can understand that. So anyway, little one. <laughs> but just for one day. You got the telescope, which is an item I'm not going to be using very often, believe me. You only pretty much use it for one particular purpose. <laughs> yeah, use the gamepad. You can also touch and slide items to select them. Sure, <laughs> try looking at our house. Well, gotta equip that telescope with R. What I simply did was drag it from the, uh, uh, why isn't the zooming in working? Oh, oh, I had to use the left, uh, control stick. Okay. And then I gotta tilt the gamepad up to, um, go like this. <laughs> I would have to say I credit this gyroscope um, experience from um, playing one of the Wii U games, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, for its intuitive camera control. And another um, another one is um, what's it called? The Nintendo 3DS game Mario Party Island Tour. It had quite a bit of gyroscope mini games. So I really like how. Um, 
Um, the camera is so intuitive for this particular version of Wind Waker. At least it still can, still maintains what's called the free roaming camera. When um, in the GameCube version you use the C-Stick for that. Little one. <laughs> Alright. Yep, this is going to be my shortcut back to the... Uh, <laughs> The place I need to go <laughs> to get that something to defend myself with. <laughs> yep. And let's see if I can get a little skip on this guy right here. Uh, I couldn't do it. I didn't know the proper way to do it, but I'm not going to talk to him. Because I already know what to do from him. Alright, you. Absolutely, I have come for serious instruction. And I really like the sword techniques for this Zelda game <laughs> better than the N64 ones, believe me. Horizontal slice, yeah. Yeah, the worst thing about the horizontal slice is you can't move the control stick at all. You have to just keep pressing B. But hold ZL and then press B. Okay. Oh, why isn't it going? All right. Oh, oh, that's right. I had to. Thrust. Yeah, that's the that's the kind of attacks um, most Zelda players even do. Mainly on ground-based enemies. The spin attack. Yeah, that one is pretty basic. All right, one more. And yeah, I always get away from him as far as I can so that I don't make a mistake swing on him. And yeah, this parry attack, that is re this is a really cool attack. Have to wait for the A button to sparkle like that. <laughs> that is really, that's a really cool feature in the entire Zelda series. It, it, one of the most coolest you'll ever see. Now finally the jump attack. That one is, um, has been pretty much a standard since the N64 Zeldas. Sure was a fine display. <laughs> Do not know what has happened. <laughs> All because the little one just can't really speak. <laughs> you accepted the hero's sword. <laughs> Wield it with B. And I'm trying to remember, was it was the blade called that in Majora's Mask? D the the hero sword, or was it the Kokiri sword? Because um, it, it appeared to have a somewhat different look from from Ocarina of Time, I should say. <laughs> Not sure what I'm trying to say there. <laughs> All right, now I can go on up to there. Yeah, this uh, free roaming camera right here. That was uh, pretty much the coolest thing about using um, camera control in. Um, the GameCube version of uh, Wind Waker HD, and it, and it can, or GameCube version of Wind Waker, it's not an HD version, just um, more cartoony bit, <laughs> but without um, <laughs> HD graphics to it. <laughs> and the best thing about when he pulls out his sword, um, it's not like um, in uh, the N64 versions where um, it's like he goes like, ha! and stops me for a moment, rather than um, keeping on running. But unfortunately, he has to stop to put it away. Kind of like in the uh, the old versions. Um, so yeah, this playthrough is definitely going to be a, uh, a somewhat speed run of it. And no, there's not going to be like glitches or anything like that. There's something I may try to pull off later on in the game, but it'll depend on if if I got a strong mood to do it, though. Hey, good friends, it's me, the Twi-King, and I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Wind Waker HD. If you would like to leave feedback on this episode, or the project in general, I'd love to hear your reactions. Also, keep up with my stuff on my YouTube channel by subscribing, and follow me on Twitter for faster updates. 
Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Have an awesome day. So long.